Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. Last week you saw me finish off the tunnel and firm up the center of the car. So now we can actually start looking at putting a steering column in. Okay, those of you watching last week will have seen that I built my uh, not bolt-in transmission tunnel. So this is all molded to go around the starter motor. It all fits in nicely and it's now, it's a rock solid unit in the car. Uh, it's all reinforced around the edge. So now that's done, this bracing uh, to support that tunnel can come back out again so then I can start looking at putting in my steering column. So let's cut out some bracing. So one of the big things I need to pay attention to when I'm putting a new steering wheel in is the actual seating position to go along with it. Now, I haven't actually sorted out the exact seats I'm gonna put in the car. I am swaying towards actually keeping these factory seats just because um, I really like this, this really funky headrest that they have. Um, it's a wooden headrest with like this, this sort of framework in it. It's something really individual, it's only on these cars, so it really makes it stand out. So whatever I get, I'm going to reupholster. So this particular seat, I can um, take the cover off. The back actually seems to be in pretty good condition, but the bottom is completely toast. Um, I can re-bolster it with foam and change the shape of it and reupholster it to uh, match the car. And it's the, car, the seat that came with the car with this funky headrest. So. Um, I can either do that, or I can do some sort of racing seats. I'm sort of thinking keep it as a uh, sort of reclinable bucket seat just for comfort. It probably, it's going to have a rear cage, it's not going to have rear seats, so I can go a fixed seat, but yeah, I'm swaying towards this. Let me know what you think anyway. Either way, let's start having a look at what I'm going to do now as far as a steering column goes. All right, so if you watched a few episodes ago, you will have seen that I got this Toyota Corolla steering column that uh, I plan on adapting to get to the uh, work with the car. Um, it's got the sort of the whole binnacle here with a key and everything else so that I can uh, get the indicators and all that sort of stuff working. It's much better than the old uh, stuff that was on the Alpha originally. I've got no original wiring. I'm rewiring the whole car. It's also adjustable and telescopic, collapsible, so uh, it's a much safer unit to put in the car. Now. I've got this and I've also gone and got myself this, which is out of a Toyota Yaris. Now, this is actually electric power steering. So you, in an electric power steering car, it runs basically a manual rack and then it has an electric motor on this steering shaft, you can see here, that assists with the, uh, the power steering. Now, it does need a controller to go with this and I'm gonna have to have a look into seeing uh, if the ECU that I'm gonna run can run it, um, because obviously you don't want too much power steering when it's at really high speed, because it's just, the, the car will be feather light. You want a little bit of control, but also you want, you do want the power steering when you're at low speed. So um, I'll need to have a look and see if I can do that. But to start with, I need to start pulling apart this column and see what bits I can interchange with these two. But being Toyota, a lot of the stuff is the same spines and the whole stuff all works together, which is what I was looking for in the first place. I just spent the last while dissecting these two steering columns and I've come to a couple of conclusions. The Corolla column has a locking adjustment, as does the Yaris column. The Corolla one appears it only, it only had a tilt function on this column. It didn't actually have uh, any extension. So this is, this is the length of the column on the Corolla. Whereas 
the Yaris has uh, an extension that can, that can go up and down and extend in and out. But even at its full extension, this is too short for my use, which is a bit of a drum. <laughs> so I need, basically I need a longer steering column. As it is, I think I'm gonna have to put uh, the steering column on hold because it's not worth installing something that's not gonna work. If I install the Corolla column, it's, it's not the same mounting points as the Yaris column anyway. If I install the Yaris column, it's too short. So let's, um, let's wait and see what I can come up with on this case and let's move on to something else. All right, it's time I think to make things a little bit easier for myself and start doing a couple of the bits on the engine that will make it simpler. For starters, I'm struggling getting in and out because some of these things I haven't stripped off of the engine yet that need to go. There's this assembly down the bottom here which is like a, a tensioner assembly for the original alternator. Um, it's far too big and gets in the way and I don't need an alternator that's anywhere near as big as what's on this because this car's not gonna have anywhere near the electrical system of a the original Ferrari, this is a very simple old car. So I can strip off some of these brackets and make a bit more room for myself. That's step one. The second thing I need to work out on this engine is some sort of crank angle trigger. So originally on the Ferrari engine, the crank angle trigger ran off of the flywheel. On this car, obviously I'm not using the factory flywheel. So there's no crank angle trigger available on that end of the engine. So I'm looking at this uh, crank pulley that's on the front here. I don't need this second row of uh, pulley belt area that's uh, behind here. I'm not running two belts, I'm just running the one belt. So that is somewhere I can sacrifice. There's no room to put the crank trigger behind and I can't see an easy way to add it onto the front, although I'm open to suggestions. I need to somehow mount a trigger wheel onto this crank pulley here with a 60 minus 2 pulley or something like that with a whole effect sensor so that I can get my crank trigger uh, setting for the ECU. And while I'm here just making things easier for myself, putting the engine in and out of the car all the time that I didn't, I stupidly didn't think of before, but one of you suggested, take the clutch off. If I take the clutch off, it's much easier mounting up to the gearbox every time. So I'm going to take the clutch off, I'm going to take these mounting brackets off and have a think about these other things. So now I have made the engine a little bit lighter and gotten rid of a few excess bits. It's time for our favorite game, put the engine back in the car. Yay, <laughs> again. Okay, so I've been delayed because I was planning on putting that steering column in today and it's not gonna fit. I need to go and get some more stuff and do some more research there. So I will move over now and have a look at the gearbox. So as many of you know, this is a Subaru BRZ gearbox. It is the same basic gearbox that's used in a bunch of different cars. And as such, um, it has a strange looking gear shifting setup. So this is actually the factory gear shift uh, linkage for the BRZ. So obviously this sits very far forward in the car and it actually bolts up something like, like this. So it's actually putting the gear stick a long way back, further back in the car. Now for me, because of where this gearbox sits, I actually want the gear stick right up basically on top of the gearbox. So what I can do with this particular setup is just disconnect this lengthening arm Take out the, take out the other bit, if I can get it out. And basically all I want to do is delete this shaft out of the system. So the rest of this bracketry can go. Um, this particular one was broken. Obviously it was in a car that must have had a hit or something and it's cracked it through the middle here. But the, uh, the gear shift itself, the gear lever itself is perfect. All I need to do is mount this little foot onto the gearbox and then connect it directly up to my gear stick and there's my there's my gear shift it should work i hope 
So let's see if I can butcher this and modify it and see if I can make it work somehow onto what I'm after here. I thought I was clever. I thought I had a very simple way to make this gear stick work and uh, I've made my little housing, my mounting spot. And as I was thinking it through, I realized it's not gonna work. So let me explain why it won't work. Uh, this is the shaft obviously on the end of the gearbox. Now it, uh, it rotates left and right and it moves in and out. Moving in and out, it does completely laterally. It doesn't sort of go like the gear stick does but left and right, it pivots. Now, if I mount this solidly on top here, this part here would be, be mounted solid. As I move it forwards and backwards, the, this little, little piece would pivot and it would work fine, no problems. It would be able to move it into first and second, no problems. But when I wanna go into to left and right, it's going to pivot the bottom away, like, because this is going to be fixed. You're not going to be able to pivot left and right and have this in a fixed spot, if you know what I mean. This bottom edge is going to move as opposed to rotating around this shaft. So I need to think again about how I'm going to make this work. So uh, I think I'm going to leave this now and uh, go back and have a little bit more tinkering with steering. All right, I went down the wreckers this morning and had a look through, scavenged through all the bits and pieces, and I think I managed to cobble some bits together that might get me uh, through to doing what I want. I managed to find this shaft here. I was using this one before, which was much shorter, so I've got this much longer shaft. I think it's out of a Toyota High Ace. So I'm gonna mix and match these bits together and try and bit, put it back in the car now and see if I can actually get something that's going to function for what I wanna do. This is just a quick mock-up with some cable ties and, uh, and a clamp holding the motor and everything in place. And it's not bad. It's still probably a little bit further away than I would like the steering wheel. And depending on where the pedals go, I think the pedals are gonna have to come back a little bit. I might be able to make a bit more room and clearance in here to get some pedals as far forward as possible. We'll see how that, that all comes together. But overall, it works. The um, the shaft going through doesn't bind at all. It's, uh, I've got a clearance out a little bit on the back of uh, the case of the engine a little bit. Um, it's just touching in there, but I can, I can clearance that enough to uh, give engine movement and all the rest of it. I've also managed to center the steering wheel a little bit more uh, to the driver because the factory steering wheel seems to be sitting off sort of towards the passenger side slightly. So I've managed to sort of sit it in, but with the door closed and even with door trims and stuff on, I'll still have plenty of room to be able to actually drive the car. So I think overall that is going to work and we actually have something to move forward with. So now it's a matter of trying to convert all of this cable ties and clamps into something that will actually hold the, uh, the steering unit. So I thought before I'll go too far, I'd just bring the dash out and have a look. Thankfully, when I bought this car, this was the nicest thing of the car. He just had it re-trimmed. So this is a nice, fresh, crispy, clean dash, 
which is perfect. And I don't want to have to modify or change it or move anything. And I realized that the steering wheel wouldn't have been in line with the gauges if I'd left it offset. So I have to put it back in the factory steering spot, even if it is slightly offset to the driver. It's not much, but that's just how the cars were. And um, what I've done now is I've realigned everything. It's close. I might need, um, I'll, I'll probably need to get some sort of uh, dish steering wheel slash um, whether I can get away with steering wheel space, uh, removable steering wheel or something along those lines. There are methods to get the steering wheel a little bit closer, but we're, we're within the realms of usability now. So that is a good thing. So now we can try and start uh, making it all fit. Okay, this is coming along quite nicely. As you see, I took a piece of square tubing, cut it in half and got two sort of nice uh, L brackets because I didn't have any angle iron that size uh, and uh, mocked up a couple of mounts. They're tacked in now and the steering wheel is sitting in a great spot. The only thing is, is that the, um, the far end moves quite a bit. So what I have to do now is make a mount on the, um, on the power steering motor, the electric motor back here. There's a, there's a hole there, so I'm gonna cut up another couple of bits of angle iron, get this thing all connected up. I made the mounts at the back here to mount on the, the electric motor for the power steering, and I actually put some rubber bushes in between it, and that was a bad idea because as soon as I did it, this thing just moved all over the place each time I turned the wheel, so I'm gonna to have to cut these out and um, I'll just put some washers in there and it's gonna be pretty hard mounted. There's no way to avoid it. I was trying to make it a little bit uh, softer, but that's the way it's gotta be. So uh, gotta keep this nice and solid because that's the motor that's gonna be moving the power steering and uh, that has to be rock solid to the car. We have steering, we have a steering wheel in the car that's actually working. It's gonna work. I am, <laughs> I am really happy. The, um, the, the motor is now mounted solidly. It does, I can see it just moving like a tiny little bit, but it's nothing. It's not actually, it's, it's bolted solid. And once I weld everything up, it should be uh, nice and firm and solid, which is great. And we're gonna have power steering in the car, which is a huge win. Having power steering is going to change it and make it so more, so much more usable. And these electric power steering units, so much easier than having a power steering pump on the engine and the, the lines and all the rest of it. It's a real headache. That is a huge win. That is good. We actually have, we have a steering car. I still have to work on those tie rods, but we'll get there. I've also spent a lot of the day talking with the engineer. The engineer's been out having a look at uh, the things I've done so far and uh, my plans moving forward and everything is all good. Bolt-in tunnel is, is okay as long as I reinforce the chassis and do the things that I'm gonna be doing anyway, which I am doing. Many of you have asked and that is definitely happening. All right, well, that is definitely all I have time for today. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1980, the Alfetta name was dropped and the GTV received a refresh with plastic bumpers and all new trim, which changed from chrome to black. The 1.6 was discontinued, but the two litre remained and it was joined by the all new 2.5 litre V6. The GTV6 2.5 got a bonnet bulge to make room for the engine, which featured the all new Bosch l Jetronic fuel injection. In 1983, a very special GTV6 3-litre car was produced in conjunction with Auto Delta. It was billed as the most powerful sports production car that Alfa had ever made. 
built in South Africa, they produce only 200 examples for homologation, with the aim to challenge the dominant BMW 535i. It won its debut race in 1983 in Kalami and continued on to be a very successful race car. Yeah. Okay, so I spent a lot of admin time this week uh, nutting out things and going to the wreckers and getting the parts that I need. But we have a steering column in the car with power steering. How good is that? And um, I have got some idea of what I'm going to do as far as the gear stick goes as well. So I should be able to get those linkages working. So we're making progress. We are making progress. Yay. I felt like Fred Flintstone when I was doing the fun facts. <laughs> the know, car the is a little bit uh, bare bones in there at the moment. Mm. But, but we have a steering wheel. Yay. Yay. All right, guys. Well, um, as always, um, if you want to watch these videos a day before everybody else, uh, join us on Patreon. It does really help us out. And uh, a lot of you guys have, uh, have definitely... Uh, Jumped on and helped us out uh, recently, which is great. Thank you and welcome to you new guys. And um, please like and subscribe and... Um, we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. See you, guys. With new trim and the chrome went from black to white. <laughs> no, I didn't. Trim changed from chrome to black. I just made that up because so I, I wasn't sure about the last part. <laughs> I really, I got there, I was like, I'm just going to go, I'm going for it. She's going, she's going for it. 2.5 got a bonnet bulge to make room for the <laughs> engine. <laughs> it was produced in, in conjunction with the very special GTV 3 6 litre. 200 examples for homologation. <laughs>